Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, beautiful people, for coming this evening to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you so much. So let's begin with the first scripture, John 10.10. 10. Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. Can somebody read it, please? It's coming. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and they may have it abundantly. Praise God. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. I have come to give you life, life in abundance. Now, supposing somebody locked the house and went out and in the evening when he came back, he opened the lock and came inside. Everything is as he had left. But when he goes to his treasury, he sees the door is open and the jewels are missing, the documents are missing, the cash is missing, but there is nobody in the house. What would you say? Has the thief been in the house? But did he see the thief? Then how does he know that his house has been in theft? Because his things are gone. In the same way, when somebody's health is gone, somebody's marriage is gone, somebody's children are gone, somebody's job is gone, somebody's peace is gone, what does that mean? The thief has come to steal, kill and destroy. Is that right? But Jesus is saying, I've come to give you life, life in abundance. Do we all have life? I hope the men heard it right. I said, do you all have life, not wife? But they say your English is a little different from our English. I hope you heard it right. So all those who said, I have life, my question would be, what is life? If I understand what is life, then I can stop the enemy from stealing my life. Because Jesus came to give me life. Do I have life? Yes. Then Jesus has come to give me more life? Am I confusing you? Am I irritating you? See, listen, when we understand the truth, the truth will make us free. So my life is the sum total of my thoughts, words, feelings and emotions, decisions, actions, habits, desires, will, my intelligence, all put together is my life. Anybody married? Yes. Nobody, but it's God. <laughs> Anybody is married here? Yes. So when you came to the altar, did the priest ask you, do you take this man as your husband? And the lady said, actually speaking, father, my mama told me, that's why I'm here. <laughs> if she gives that statement, can she get married? Was it her decision? Unless she says, yes, it's my decision, then only the door opens. Is that right? So let us check our life. 
supposing I have ungodly thoughts, what will be my life? If my words are ungodly, what will be my life? If my actions are ungodly, what will be my life? So when Jesus says, I've come to give you life, he's saying, I've come to give you my word, and when you listen to my word attentively and understand, it will change your thinking. It will change your feelings. It will also change your decision. And when it changes your decision and your action, now the person is willing to submit to God and resist all those thoughts all those words, all those actions that he was doing before which contradicted God's word. So how does the thief steal, kill and destroy? He comes and gives me knowledge which is of the world and makes me believe that it is the truth. How did he steal, kill and destroy Adam and Eve? All that he did was give knowledge and give knowledge in such a way that the person should believe it is the truth so when a person is thinking or believing or receiving knowledge and the process is going on in his mind that very moment when his thinking does not align with God's word the result is st stealing killing and destroying. The enemy has laid his seed and this seed is going to bring destruction in the future. So this seed which takes me from believing God's word, takes me out of it, is called as strife. Praise God. So can a person have strife? Example. Let's say all of them are singing. And Brother Hector's mic, I'm the man at the mixer. I purposely keep it very low. And my brother is blowing all his lungs out. But the sound is not coming on the speaker. Brother Hector? Can there be a cause for strife? Because you really practiced hard at home and you came here and I on the mixer put you off. Can there be a strife? So whenever a person moves from love to out of love to anything that is envy, bitter, offense, jealousy, the person has moved into strife. And strife is a demonic spirit that will always steal, kill and destroy. As I asked you, are there anybody married? And you said yes. Now in marriage, is there a possibility of getting strife with a spouse? Oh, you, oh, in India, any Indians here? Any Indians? The answer will be quickly yes. <laughs> Praise God. When things don't happen the way I desire, can I get into strife? Come on. And that strife is a demonic spirit that will destroy people, families, generations, even the church, even the best ministry, even the best anointed ministry is destroyed by a spirit called strife. And how, how much does it take to open the door for Satan to come in? The moment my thinking does not align with God's word, I am in strife. So let's look into the Bible and see what does this strife do? James chapter 3 and verse number, let's start with verse number 13. 
see we are not only going to see the problem but much more we are going to see the solution hello are you with me and when we see the solution in no time you will see also the healing signs and wonders happening so quickly now did jesus preach the gospel yes was he preaching was he teaching what was the reason why he was preaching and teaching because he had no other job very good yeah for us to know him better for us to know him better the reason jesus was preaching was only for one reason that people would know the truth and make the correction those who made the correction followed him those who did not make the correction came got blessed got healed but never followed him so who are the ones who will follow jesus the ones who heard the teaching and quickly search their heart their mind and see hey what i'm thinking and what jesus is saying is so different i need to make correction and the person who makes correction the result is guaranteed praise god so is it possible for a person to attend every week a meeting like this yes does that mean because i came every week i will have supernatural life now never my life will continue to be miserable my life will change only when i've changed the seed i've made the correction praise god the reason the word is preached only for one reason when the word is preached each one is running their scanners and saying oh my god i thought it was like this but jesus is saying like this so lord i choose to make a correction by agreeing with you and disagreeing with the knowledge that i had which looked to be truth but it's a lie can i give you an example yes hello can i give you an example then we'll go ahead can we can i give you an example yes. please say yes yeah yes. now how many of you believe god gives you victory nobody how many of you believe god gives you victory some of them are saying he is giving an example i better not put my hand up okay there are those who did not put their hands up i'm going to ask you a question how many of you believe god gives you victory how many of you believe god gives you victory or how many of you believe god heals you ah if i say healing all hands are going up now all those who said god heals you correct did you ever see jesus saying i heal you what did he say so there are many things that we think is one way but god is speaking to us a truth okay 1 john 5 4 come on quickly baby 1 john 5 4 and then we go to james chapter 3 please read it whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcome in the world so who gives you victory over sickness ah good who gives you victory over demonic forces who gives you protection see you both were united one question and you all became opposition <laughs> now can that cause strife so that's why in families are there strife yes, yes. so what does the de- devil do bring division what does the spirit of god do heals division and brings unity now when you read that scripture does the scripture say god gives you victory or your faith gives you victory ah huh? okay let's let's see now faith let's take one more example so that you understand am i going to walk in god's way 
or am I going to walk in my way? When a person is weak, can he call up somebody and say, I'm so very weak, please keep me in prayer? Oh, you all don't do that? Yes. yes. So do you talk to God? Do you ask him to make you strong? Yes. yes. Now let us see what Jesus, what God has to say. Joel 3.10. Joel 3.10 L- Listen, my friend, I don't know what is your problem. But if you pay attention to every truth and change your thinking, by the time the service is over, you will not need the wheelchair anymore. Because in this, in this whole journey in Australia, I have seen people come out of the wheelchair, I see people Last, last night we saw a man who had one eye absolutely dead. The eye opened up and he, I said, where's my nose? He said, I can see your nose. I said, can you touch it? He touched it. The truth sets you free. And who gives you victory? Whose faith? The preacher's faith. Whose faith? So what's the job of a preacher? To speak to you and teach you the system so that once you understand the system you make the correction and that correction from your side activates the faith on your side is it a good game come on is it a good game now read it please beat your neighbor what's what's that beat your neighbor beat your spouse Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears and let the weak pray. Let the weak pray. 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 What are you doing? Hey, come on. Let's be honest. What are you doing? Pray. And the Lord says, Can you please shut up and say, I'm strong? But what are we doing? Lord, I am so sick. Jesus, I am so sick. I am sick. Lord, I am so weak. Please, weak. He says, can you just stop it and keep saying to yourself, I am strong. That's all. Now, now, when a person is weak and he says, I am strong, is he telling a lie? Maybe. Is he telling a lie? No, no, no. If he is weak and he is telling I am weak. Did he tell a lie? No. no. Or, okay, he did not tell a lie. When he is weak and he is saying, I am strong, did he tell a lie now? <laughs> he says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> am I confusing you? Yes. yes, I know that. I know that. I know that. Somebody told me, why do you confuse people? I said, I don't confuse people. I want people to know the truth. For example, I asked you three, four times many questions and you last said, I don't know. Okay. Now if I tell you, are you a boy? A, a man. Okay, a man. I, I'll say, no, but you look like a woman. Will you get confused? You'll never get confused in this area. Because you know it and you know it and you know it. In the same way, when you know it and you know it and you know it, the system of the kingdom of God, you don't get confused. So now, now, when a person is weak and he's saying, I'm strong, is he saying a lie or is he aligning his thoughts to the word of God? So if he's aligning his thoughts to the word of God, is he connected to God? So what was his job? Say, I'm strong and keep on believing what he's saying. Now whose job is to fix him up and make him strong? No, 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 listen, listen. Are these lights on? If you switch it off and the lights are not on, will you call up the company, hello, the lights are not on? No. The company's job is to send the power. Your job is to switch it. So when do you put the switch on? When you agree with God's word. Who is generating the power, you or the electric board? 
are they supplying you 24 hours 7 in the same way god's holy spirit is available and ready to work for you 24 hours 7 provided you speak and put the switch on what the bible says so if the bible says you say you are strong what are you supposed to do okay okay is anybody driving a car yes. Yes. now when you bought the car there is a reverse gear and there is a drive so the car company says the system is this when you put reverse gear the car will go behind when you put the drive it will go in front okay but you put a reverse gear and you pray lord i thank you jesus i praise you jesus and you look in front and your desire is for the car to go in front but you put a reverse gear and then you press the accelerator where will it go so in the same way god is saying my system is that when you're weak open your mouth and say now those who are singers anybody sing uh, my, my my friend is here you sing right and you sing give thanks excellent 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 after the praise and worship somebody meets you and says how are you what man <laughs> now are you speak, saying what the lord has done or what you have done <laughs> come on so are we speaking faith or are we speaking fact so our life is governed by faith or sight the Bible says the just shall live by and not by and we live by and not by so when you're living by sight are you connected to God's kingdom or are you connected to the devil's kingdom so if your connection is there where will the bill come from come on can we talk if let let the weak say I am let the poor say, let the sick say, I'm dead. <laughs> now, can you see the difference? Let's say a husband is drinking. What does the wife say? How's your husband? What man all the time? Tun. Easter is every day. Now, is she speaking faith? Or is she speaking sight or fact? So, will she ever have victory? Will she be ever able to overcome her situation where the husband is drinking? So, who puts the switch on? The word coming out of my mouth puts the switch on. Now, when the word comes out, is it faith or is it fear? When it does not align with God's word, it is fear. And fear is from the kingdom of darkness. It's a demonic spirit that will surely bring destruction. So what is my challenge every day? How much I pray or how much I exercise my faith? How much I pray, praise God. And that's why a person is going on putting reverse gear, getting the car bang, puts it in the service station, gets it repaired, brings it back and again reverse gear and again bangs and this has been going for years and then he comes to a conclusion, there's no God. Why should I come to church? What has church done to me? I came all those, uh, which day? Fridays only. This meeting is what? Fridays? Every Friday I came without missing. And every person I told them to lay hands on me. And they prayed over me. But what did you say all throughout the day? 
I'm weak, I'm broken, I'm shattered, my this, my that. Were you speaking faith or facts? So do we need to make correction? Yes. So what will you tell your neighbor now? You are weak or you are strong? strong? Your husband is good or bad? Good. Your wife is good or bad? Good. Your children are anointed or going on a crazy round? Yeah. Every time you, you know, you know, there was this person in Bombay. He was caught up with prostitution and so many things. And one day he came for the service and he got a touch of the Lord and he began to study the principles of faith. After three months he said, you know brother, I'm getting married. When is the marriage? After two months. Then after two months he said, brother I'm married and you know, we are quickly going to have children. After six months he said, my wife is pregnant. Praise God. What wife is not yet married? Is talking? Faith. And everybody were making a joke out of him because he was in his mid 40s. And he said, You know, my wife is so anointed, she is a woman of God. So when the when, when one day a proposal came, and this girl had decided that she will not get married, she will live her life for the service of God. But when this proposal came, she was forced and the Lord said, this is the man I have prepared for you. And when this girl came, she was loaded with scriptures. And he got married and now he is telling everybody, my wife is pregnant. She was not. Till the time for three years, he had no children, but he said, we just had an admission of a child in school. Isn't it looking foolish? Hello, isn't it looking foolish? Yes. But exactly what he said, one by one, those things came to pass. When God gave Abraham a promise, he was 75. And he got that manifestation of that promise at 100. But did he keep that promise going? Yes. How long do we keep up the promise going? Do you know when a person is speaking his faith, he looks absolutely foolish. When the doctor, I want to ask all these sisters, all those who got children, when the doctor told you, you are pregnant, did you feel you were pregnant? No, but he said, now did you believe? I'm asking the ladies, brother. <laughs> You are talking about your wife, okay? I understand. I understand, praise God. He is, he is so attentive, he wants to answer every question. Whether it's men or women, I want to answer every question. Praise God. No, 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 no. Did, he, did, did, did you see the baby inside? No. But did you know you would deliver the baby once you are pregnant after nine years? Oh, not nine years. Nine months? Come on, nine months? But did you see the baby? But every time somebody said something, what did you say? I am pregnant. Did you take all the precautions to keep the baby safe or did you go horse riding? Hello. In the same way, when a person is saying, I am strong, I am healthy, he has become pregnant with that what he's talking about faith is always about pregnancy but pregnancy where in the spiritual womb do we men have womb spiritual womb oh yeah i've delivered many things from this womb so every time i speak my faith do i have the resources is this your son? Really? Did he come from your womb? So that means he came from your workshop? Okay, now, how did you make his beautiful eyes? How did you make his beautiful eyes? How did you make his heart? It, he came from your workshop, right? 
So how did you make his heart? She's stuck. How did you make the lungs? She's more stuck. <laughs> what about the hands and legs? When you are pregnant with a seed, the Holy Spirit works on that seed and the potential in the seed created everything. And when he came out, you said, look at his nose, looks like grandpa. <laughs> Come on. Is that right? In the same way, when a person is saying X, Y, Z sickness, but he's saying, I'm healthy in the name of Jesus. He has planted the seed of faith. And now the Holy Spirit will work on that seed and bring forth the healing. And when you say that, people will call you a fool. But a person who understands the system, when he keeps saying and keeps believing, and when the manifestation takes place, then they say, hey, I don't know how he does it, but it keeps happening again and again and again. I become pregnant. Now this camera, can you see? I got pregnant with this camera. And this, to search for this camera, I took about a month where I want to broadcast it live. I, in one camera, there are nine cameras. Okay? And this camera is not available. It's only available in the US. And I'm pregnant and I'm saying, Lord, I need this camera quickly because now when I'm going on a tour, I have to take it so that I can do the recording and everything beautiful. And, and, and that's just then. Somebody calls from US. Hey, brother, I'm coming. Do you want anything? Yeah. Camera. <laughs> Your spiritual womb has got such power that you can get connected to the throne of God and how many of you have done online shopping? Hello, do you know, do, do you do online shopping? Yeah. What do you see on the screen? The real product or the picture? Yeah. Do you read all those things? Yeah. The specification, no? Just order? No. <laughs> My God. <laughs> do you read all the details once you are satisfied? Do you place an order? Yeah. Are you sure the delivery will come? In the same way, Bible is online shopping of heaven. So he's saying, he's saying, you want to do some shopping of your weakness? Open your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm strong. Praise God. Delivery will come. You understand only that online shopping where you have to pay. Here you don't have to pay because Jesus made the payment for you. And he said, it is finished from my side. Place as much order as you want. That clapping also is not coming because it is 50 50. It, does it happen really? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay, let's have some online shopping. I want somebody who has got a problem in the back. Some spine problem. Come on. I'll deal with you last. Come on. Somebody has got a back problem. How the devil is saying, darling, don't get up. <laughs> I told you I will never leave you nor forsake you. But if you get up, I will have to leave you. Sweetheart, I have been with you for so many years. Yes, you took advantage of your husband by telling him to massage. But if you get up, that also will go. Not one. Lord, give me at least one, Lord. Yeah, come, 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 please come, please come. It doesn't look like you got a backache the way you got up. No, no, but the way you got up, it doesn't look like you, 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 you got up like a, you know, a person going for a hundred meters run. Yes, please come here. Yeah. Now, now, can you see that red light on the camera? Oh, yes. yes. When you go to the operation theatre, the doctors also put the red light. <laughs> it's not there? Yeah. In, in India, we, when they take you for surgery, there's a red light on. So the red light is on. So the surgery will begin. Oh. Okay. What problem you got? Uh, my back is the two, it's, it's twisted or something. Wow. Yeah. 
So it twisted. So we got to make it straight. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, God. For how many years it is twisted? Uh, a while. Many years. Many years means 30, uh, 40, 50, 60, eight, 70, 80, 90, 100. <laughs> more than 8 years, brother. More than 8 years. Now, uh, which one is better that I teach you the faith? Hello? Yes. yes. So let the weak say? I'm so let the twisted back say? I'm, I'm restored. Good. Somebody said that. Yeah, good. Now you hold the mic, close your eyes, and listen, listen. When you are saying, what is very important is your imagination. Open your eyes, open your eyes. What is very important is your imagination. If, you're, if the doctor has given you a diagram, your back is like this, yeah. and the original is like this, stop looking at that, look at this. Okay. And say, thank you Jesus, my back is completely restored. Okay? Close your eyes, make a video, and say it. Loudly. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say it loudly? Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that my back has been restored, Lord Jesus. Whatever the doctors have said, Lord Jesus. Ah, no, 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 no. Only, only one line. Thank you, Jesus. Thank my back Jesus. is completely restored. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored. Yes. Keep saying. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored. One more time. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored. Very good. One more time. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored, Jesus. One more time. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored, Jesus. Keep saying. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that my back is completely restored. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, yes, yes. that my back is completely yes. restored. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 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 you did the same part, you said it. Yes. The Holy Spirit finished the job. Yeah. Not a... Oh, beautiful. Praise the Lord. Now, now you turn this side, this side. Now what about this side, this side? <laughs> My God, she's so flexible now. After how many years are you touching your toes? <laughs> I don't know about that. But you could not do that. <laughs> now are you laughing or crying? I don't understand. <laughs> how do you feel now? Good. How much time did it take? Uh, no time at all. Like a minute. And, and did we pray? Or did we say? We, I said it. And why were you talking about the doctor? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did, did, did Jesus, did, is the word of God saying, let the weak talk about the doctor? He said, let the weak say, I only explain to you about the doctor. Don't, don't bring the doctor in between. Okay. Only Jesus here. Yeah, praise God. Thank you so much, brother. How do you feel? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Do you know you stood up from that place yes. and you came here? Yes. And he had to leave? Yes. Yes. But the others who are sitting there, they go back home with the same fellow. No correction. No correction. Can I give you one more chance? Yes. Can you get up and come? Shoulder? Doesn't matter. Come, come. John, you got x-ray or what? No. Now, how do you know how our shoulder has got problem? John? From your specs, you can see a shoulder has got a problem. I lifted up my hand, that's why. Okay. Please decide. <coughs> yes, what problem you got? I got neck and uh, shoulder pain. Uh, neck and shoulder pain. And you? Yeah, neck and shoulder pain. <laughs> okay, can you stand close to me? <laughs> now, we got to kill this. Okay, what will you say? Shall we pray or say? God heal me. Okay. What will you what will you pray? Thank you, Jesus, my friend is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, heal me. Thank you, Jesus, heal me. Thank you, Jesus, heal me. 
both will go home the same. <laughs> now when you are saying, listen, listen, please, please don't get offended, okay? Please. When you are saying, Lord, heal me, when will a person say, heal me when he is sick? <laughs> I thought you are also coming for some healing. <coughs> That was really deceiving. <laughs> I was so happy I got one more client. Okay, now, now, now. Please understand. She is saying, Lord Jesus, please heal me. When will a person say, heal me? Only when he's sick. Now, did, did, is the word of God saying, ask God to heal you? Or is he saying, speak your faith? Speak your faith. So what will you say? Thank you, Jesus. I mean it. Okay. The problem is with the bones, right? Muscles and bones. Muscles and bones. So say this. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. all my bones are aligned and my nerves are loose. In the name of Jesus, all my bones no, 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 take, are aligned. Take, take, take. No, no, no. On the mic. You, you, know, you know why I'm saying to speak loudly? The reason is, when I speak my words and it gets amplified, my natural ears are <coughs> hearing. And the Bible says, faith comes by? Hearing. Fantastic. So if you are saying it loudly, your ears are hearing a loud voice. And that word which you have said is coming into your natural ears, going inside, finding the situation and terminating that situation completely. I, I, are you understanding? Yes. See, everything that we are doing is scripture based. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when she is saying, thank you Jesus, my bones are aligned, my nerves are aligned and I am completely loose. Now, when she is saying this, those words that she is using is going and doing the job inside her and the Holy Spirit is doing the surgery. Are you following? So can I'll, I'll help you. Don't worry. I'll help you. But on the mic. Come on, give me a smile. Yes, don't be so serious. Come on, close your eyes and say, "Thank you, Jesus." Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are aligned. All my bones are aligned. My nerves are loosed. My nerves are loosed. And I'm completely healed. And I'm completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are aligned. All my bones are aligned. All my nerves are loosed. All my nerves are loosed. And I'm completely healed. And I'm completely healed. Now you say. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones. All my bones are alive. All my nerves, my nerves are loose. And I'm, and I'm completely, completely healed. healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All my, my bones, bones are aligned. My nerves are loose. Thank you, Jesus. I am completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones. All my bones are aligned. My nerves are loose. I'm completely healed. One last time. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are aligned. My nerves are loose and I'm completely healed. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Now move. <coughs> Is it there? Slight? Slightly. Slightly, okay. You? Better. What better? Is it there or not there? <coughs> no. Okay. You say it one more time. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are aligned, my nerves are loose, I'm completely healed. Say it last time like a warrior. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. My bones are aligned, my nerves are loose, I'm completely healed. Finish. Thank you, Jesus. No more. Come on. No more. Good. Should I turn your neck? <laughs> what did I do? For helping to know the truth. Now, did they speak faith or did they pray? They spoke faith. And that faith is their prayer. But what were they praying before? Lord Jesus, please heal me. Was it faith or fear? Now, when they spoke fear, was that a prayer? Yes. But was it faith prayer? No. Fear prayer. Now, will it work for them or against them? This electric power is good, but if I don't follow the system, I can die. 
If I don't follow the system, this whole house can be burned. Is that right? So prayer is when you're opening your mouth, you are activating the spiritual force. Praise God. Thank you. And what's your name? Lorraine. Lorraine. And yours? Judy. Judy. My mic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, sister, don't try. Come here. In green. Come here. Come. She's trying and trying and she did not get healed. Were you trying? Yes, I did. And it's not gone? No. No, I know that. I know, it won't go. You want it to go? Yes, please. You want it to go? Is that your husband? Yes. Can I ask him? Can darling? She's asking, darling, do you want it to go? He's saying, please. Okay, hold the mic. Close your eyes. And say, in the name of Jesus, I'm loosed. Yeah. Say it ten times. I'm nervous. I'm shaking. Sorry. Yeah, you're shaking because of the anointing over here. Okay. The presence of God is so much. Mm -hmm. Just stand behind. She might fall also. Uh, don't worry. She won't break her neck. I've got a strong man. Yeah. You can hold this. But this is too weak. You can go with this. Yeah, I'm shaking. Something. I know. You, uh, I'm, not, I'm not touching you. Okay. okay. Now, clearly close your eyes. And say, in the name of Jesus, I'm loosed. In the name of Jesus, I'm loose. Keep saying that. In the name of Jesus, I'm loose. 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 Yeah, finished. No. Finished. Done? Yes. Done. Yes. What? The bones are there. Mm -hmm. it is. Yes, thank you. Can you tell me what's happening? No, suddenly I'm just feeling wobbling. Like, yeah. Wobbling, I know. That's called as being drunk. What did you drink? I never drink. <laughs> okay. Now, now you are already drunk. <laughs> yeah. You are trying to control your balance. Yes, I, yes, I know. Because this is a strong drink. You want to drink more? Okay. Uh, just take her to her husband. Now, now, before you go, okay. are you set free of your shoulder problem? Yes, I do. Yes. No, no pain? No. I just hold her. Huh? She's full drunk. Yeah, yeah. Please take her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank God I've come back. Are you annoyed with me? You're still drunk? Now, when I said to her, in the name of Jesus, I'm loosed, did I use my words or did I use Jesus' words? Because Jesus in Luke 13, 10 said, Woman, you are loosed. So what did I do? I repeated this. I told her to repeat that word. And in that word, Jesus fixed somebody's back. For 18 years. So now, 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 isn't the Bible like a lawyer using his law book and going to the court and saying section so and so, say so and so. In the same way, a person with faith is opening the book, the book of heaven, and saying, in this book, so and so, such and such a thing is recorded. I see the same words. Are you all confused? Then why are you not even clapping here for Jesus? Can we continue? Yes, brother. How the devil steals, kills and destroys. So I was just showing you what is faith. Praise God. Now, 
Let's come back to the topic. James chapter 3, verse number 13. Now, why I'm sharing this is, supposing a person is exercising his faith, let the weak say I'm strong. But if there is strife, it won't work. When there is bitterness, it won't work. When there is jealousy, it won't work. Because all these spirits will blow the fuse off. So here, the word of God says, James chapter 3, verse number 13. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, which is never in Australia, praise God. <laughs> Why did you laugh? Sorry? Yeah, because I'm speaking faith. Yeah, I'm speaking faith. I'm not speaking sight. Can you see? Can you see? Every moment you see, there are situations not in your favor. And those situations not in your favor, your eyes are going to talk to you and make you open your mouth and speak what you see. So the moment you spoke facts, you disconnected faith and you activated fear. Are you understanding the system? Yes. Do you have traffic rules? Yes. What if one fellow goes crazy and just takes the car off the lane? Can that person cause death to so many people? Yes. In the same way, when I don't follow the system of heaven, and I open my mouth and I speak, I have called destruction not only in my life, but it also affects others who are connected to me. Praise God. So, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, now when you read that, you should quickly say, thank you Lord Jesus, I am completely delivered from bitter envy and strife in my heart. Now, did you speak truth? Yes. Did you speak fact? No. But the fact is, you might have bitterness. You might have unforgiveness. You might have envy. But when you keep saying, thank you Jesus, I am set free. Thank you Jesus, I am set free. Now who is going to come and, and activate that faith? The Holy Spirit. Give you what? Freedom. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Now if you are saying, Lord deliver me from envy. That's not faith. Okay, let's put it this way. When Jesus saw a blind man, did he pray or did he say? Did he pray to God, God please heal him or did he say receive sight? He saw a paralytic man, did he pray or did he say pick up your mat, rise up and walk? So you see all of Jesus' is healing is he is saying, not praying. If you see Jesus casting out demons, he is not praying, he is saying. And did Jesus say, I have come to show you the way, the truth and the life? Yes. Come on, Jesus is the way. If Jesus did that, what am I, I supposed to do? Imitate the same. And when you are imitating the same, can you see the result? The shoulder pain, how, how many years you had? Three, four years. Where is Judy? Yeah, how many years you had? How come the cousins were together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And my sister in green, what's your name? Tina. Tina. Dina. 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 Dina, how many years you suffered? But your husband looks to be more happy than you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if you have bitter envy or strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This kind of wisdom, this kind of thinking does not come from above. But this kind of thinking is earthly, sensual and devilish. Any husband and wife had an argument? 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You don't raise your hand. Okay. When you had an argument, let's say the husband always remembers the date, but that day he forgot to wish her for a birthday. Is it possible? Very rare, but it happened. Now will the wife get annoyed? Now at quarter to twelve, when her birthday was getting over, she reminded him. So now that fellow is on his knees. She is saying, don't touch me. Now on the bed, he is trying his best to convince her. What is she doing? Turning her back to him and saying, don't touch me. So he tried and tried, but she is not cooling down. What is she running in her mind? What's running in her mind? She has got wisdom now. See, the, the Bible says, this wisdom did not come from heaven. But this wisdom is what? Earthly. So if she is saying, don't touch me. Whom is she saying now, touch me? So whole night she slept with whom? <laughs> hey, come on, you can laugh, but we slept with the devil so many times. Come on. Come on. And if she sleeps the whole night with the devil, in the morning what comes out? Back is paining, head is paining, this is paining, that is paining. You had a night visual with whom? <laughs> Look at those who stopped all these activities. They are always healthy. Do you want a scripture to prove that? We'll finish this and I'll show you the scripture. For where there is envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. You become an agent where Satan is using your body to cause destruction in your own marriage, in your own family, in your own siblings, in your own job, in your, in your friends, in the, in the church, in the community, everywhere. Because this kind of wisdom is not heavenly, but is devilish, it's demonic. So if a person is in strife, because somebody did something wrong. Have you ever heard, my life got messed up from the time this fellow came into my life? Some is saying, yes, brother, preach on this. <laughs> no, no, no. Just because somebody did something wrong, does that mean your life should be messed up? No? no. no? Yes? No? no. Yes? No. 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 See, listen, the Bible says, no matter who did what, what was your response decides your future. Can you see Jesus behind? When he was on the cross, was extreme negative things done to him? Was he filled with joy or sorrow? Really? Really? Joy or sorrow? So come here, let me bash you up. Let me see. Will a person get joy when he's made naked? Will a person get joy when, he's, when those nose, nails go through his hands? Will the person have joy when he's whipped in such a way that his bones could be seen? Then how come you're saying he had joy? That's what he liked. That's what he liked. <laughs> I was about to run. Okay, okay, let's see whether he had joy or he had sorrow. Okay, give me Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Is it interesting the Bible? 
Hello, is it is the Bible interesting? Yes. So now, when you read that, are you willing to make the corrections? Yes. See, the Bible can be learned as one of the subject, like history or science, and you can get all the knowledge, and you can debate because you got knowledge. But the Bible, when it is learned from your heart, it always has power. But when it is from the mind, there is absolutely zero power. Why it is having zero power? The word of God becomes powerless when a person is thinking from the mind. But the word of God has extreme power when the person is thinking from his heart. Why? Because Jesus said, when the seed fell by the wayside, what happened? The person did not understand the word. Did the word produce anything? No. When the seed fell along the rocky side, what happened? The person received the word, but was on strife and offense on account of the word. So was the word powerful? No, it did not work. The word, the seed fell along the thorny bush. Was it powerful? No, because the person got into worry, into temptation, into the desires of the world, into sin. It did not produce anything. But the same word now fell into a good soil, where the person is making the correction and agreeing with the word. Now, did the word become powerful? So if, the, if I'm studying the Bible and not making correction, will that word work? It will never work. Because the word becomes powerless. The word is powerless in a soil that disagrees with the word. The same word becomes extremely powerful, producing supernatural harvest when the person's soil agrees with the word. So, is it going to depend on God's word or is it going to depend on the condition of my soil? The condition of my heart. Are you, for, are you understanding? Yes. So, let's read that Hebrews 12 2. Read it please. So we find Jesus, in spite of how he was treated, the Bible says, take Jesus as an example. Was Jesus, was Jesus looking at what people did to him or was he looking at his father and his will? Now, was he even looking at how people treated him? No. So he's saying, look to Jesus. He's the one who is the author. He's the one who gives you the grace to believe his word and he's the finisher of our faith and look at him who for the who for the now was this crucifixion on the cross an accident or a martyrdom or was it a setting it was a absolute setting by the father the son and the holy spirit so what was the setting? The setting was, if Jesus dies on the cross without disobeying the Father, then he wins the match and through his victory, the whole mankind gets freedom. The whole mankind is adopted in the family of God. The whole mankind gets healing and deliverance. The whole mankind gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus is going through the process, is he looking at the process or is he looking at the victory? So even though everything was done against him, did Jesus' response decide the victory or what was done to him decided the victory? So in our life every day, is our response going to decide my victory or what people have done to me? Are you following? So once you understand that, you are all excited in every match because now it's not going to depend on what they do, but how I respond. 
And if I don't respond by strife, but I respond in faith, the result is victory. Praise God. Praise God. If a person, now let's say, you went to gym and you took the dumbbells 10 times and you got tired, then this man is a coach. Will he tell you, okay, 10 times okay? Or will, you make it, or will he make you do four sets more? How much will you be angry with him? Because he's going against your comfort. Because that, the last set will be more painful. But is he causing pain? Yes. But are you following? Yes. After six months, will you be the same? No. Your muscles have grown. In the same way, there are some people in your life who are coming against you. Use them as dumbbells for your own betterment and respond with faith and love, you grow stronger and stronger, higher and higher, and better and better, and that's how you get promoted. So is it going to be your response? Come on. So the more the pressure comes, what's the meaning? The meaning is, hell has taken notice of you, that you are a big threat to, the king, to his kingdom. And when hell has taken notice, God is saying, come on son, Respond with love, respond with forgiveness and just align your thinking with the word. Look at Jesus. And when you do that, the result is not common. The result is always uncommon. The reward is always uncommon. You will reach a level which is not your capacity or your, uh, or your ability. Now you are responding through the word. And the result is coming on God's ability. Amen. So what is the meaning? The meaning is, whenever there is a, a chance of strife coming in, begin to respond with love. The result or the reward is beyond imagination. If, if you go home, okay, there's less time. When you go home, read the life of Joseph. Everything is against him, against him, against him, against him. And all the time, he is love and forgive, love and forgive, love and forgive. What's the reward? He becomes the governor. Now, why is God making him a governor? Because of his character, now God is able to bring him as a deliverer for mankind who would have been destroyed by that famine for seven years. So when God gives you a promotion, the promotion is not for you. The promotion is that you will be like Joseph for people who are perishing and it is your, your action that will bring people out of darkness into the marvelous light. <laughs> Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, for the joy that was set before him, endure the cross. Are we supposed to endure our crosses? What is the cross for? A cross is, a, is, is your turn to let your flesh get crucified, not by force, but your own choice. What is the flesh? Every time I'm thinking something that contradicts to God's word, that what I'm thinking contradicting to God's word is a seed of destruction. When I take that seed and I crucify it on the cross by saying, Lord, I'm not going to disobey you, but I'm going to obey you even to the point of death. That crucifixion will always bring supernatural result. Your fellowship with God, your relationship with God will be so strong that when you open your mouth and you start speaking, heaven opens up and backs you up wherever you go. Don't you want that? Come on, don't you want that? Praise God. So can you write some notes before we leave because I know my time is up. How much time I got? One hour? A one hour, very good, praise God. How much? 10, 20, 30, 30, okay, 30 minutes. 20. Praise God. Is it helping you? Yes. Really? So why don't you give me extra time? See, 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 when you're working, extra, do they give you dollars? Yes, for the time. If you, if you work one hour extra, do they give you dollars? Yes. So if you allow me to work extra, will it benefit you? Yes. Then 
you should keep me, no? The alarm, okay. Right. Can you cut the wire? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so write down, write down, please, please write down. Strife opens the door to evil. Strife opens the door to evil and gives the enemy and gives the enemy an opening and gives the enemy an opening to attack us gives the enemy an opening to attack us. Now, has it happened in your life, a small negative thought came and you got flared up and the Lord said, keep your mouth shut. And you said, Lord, let me show them who I am. <laughs> and you went and opened your mouth. Now, did you get peace by opening your mouth? Hello, did you get peace or you get, went into pieces? <laughs> so whenever even a single thought comes which does not align with God's word, it means the enemy is knocking at the door. And if you open the door at that time, now you have invited the devil and said, come on and do what you want. So who is in charge of opening the door? Is the devil going to use different strategies to knock at the door? Yes. One of the powerful strategies to get you into strife. So write down. Operating in strife, operating in strife, gives the devil the opportunity to do anything, to do anything he wants to do. My friend, I have not forgotten you, okay? The last 10 minutes is for you. Because, because I, you know when you are writing, there must have happened some things in your life. So as you are writing, I want you to clear up those things before you come here. Because as long as that strife is there, with, you know, we all go through so many things in life. So as you are writing, talk to God and say, Lord, search me now and show me whom I need to forgive, whom I need to let go. I want to just let go everybody. I just want to love them and bless them. So once those things are cleared up, then it becomes easy. Now the fuse is full charge. Okay? That's why I'm teaching on this topic. Because strife will keep you in bondage all your life. Okay, let me give you an example. Was it God's will for the Israelites to go to the promised land? Did they reach the promised land? No. What was the reason? Strife. The demonic spirit caused so much of strife that they were complaining, grumbling, murmuring and every time something happened they picked up stones to kill their leader, Moses. Do we also pick up stones with our words to kill the leader? Hello. So are you ready to pick up stones now? <laughs> when you pick up stone to kill somebody by your words, one stone went, but a multiple comes back to us. So when you are talking something negative about somebody, you have cursed that person. But if that person operates in love, the curse comes back in multiples to ourselves. That's why when Saul was trying to kill David and his friend said, come on, this is a golden opportunity, kill him. He said, no, I will not touch God's anointed one. Let God deal with him, but I will not get disqualified. Praise God. We must learn to recognize, 
we must learn to recognize this evil spirit we must learn just underline that word learn we must learn to recognize this evil spirit so that we can take so that we can take the necessary steps so that we can take the necessary steps to block it necessary steps to block it when it shows up next slide we overcome strife we overcome strife by crucifying the flesh we overcome strife by crucifying the flesh the flesh is a way of thinking the flesh is a way of thinking that contradicts god's word <coughs> that contradicts god's word now do you understand why the bible never says my people are destroyed by the devil never god never says my people are destroyed by the devil he says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge or their knowledge contradicts my word praise god but if the knowledge agrees to the word then that person is able to destroy the works of the devil but if the person thinking or knowledge contradicts god's word then that knowledge will destroy anything and everything that god has given you both operate in the same system but in the opposite direction praise god this mindset this mindset what mindset when my thinking does not align with god's word this mindset is marked is marked by self centeredness is marked by self centeredness which in turn which in turn leads to bitterness and strife the first step in identifying this spirit very very important the first step in identifying this spirit is to deeply examine is to deeply examine our hearts and analyze our thought process is the bible all the time saying believing in the heart or believing in the mind what's the difference mind mind is where your five senses communicate to you on things seen I don't have time others have shown you the bible is a book i can see with my eyes it is a book i can touch and feel it is a book i can turn the pages it is a book i can read from those pages it is a book but when the same person reads the word of god the word is god the word was made flesh So now comes the challenge do i examine the bible as a book then i'm looking at it at it with my mind but if i look at the same bible as the flesh of jesus then i'm believing in the heart if the woman touched jesus's garment and the power went into her in the same way when i touched the flesh of jesus which is the bible the power of god flows into me and i get healed 
Are you following? So he always speaks about examine the heart. Because in my heart is the word of God. So if the in my heart, the word that I have, which I think is the word of God, but actually speaking, it's a lie. Will it give birth to strife? Yes. So when I asked you, do you believe God heals you? You said yes. But the Bible doesn't say God heals you. God has finished every healing on the cross. When he declared by his wounds, you have been healed. Now the challenge is not what I can get from God. The challenge is how can I make my mind submit to my heart? Are you understanding brother? From your heart, the Bible says you are healthy. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus by his wounds has healed you. But from your mind, the mind is saying, but I cannot move my legs. Can you move your legs? No. Because there is no sensation. So now comes what? Which one is stronger? No, no, which one is stronger? The knowledge that my legs are not moving or the knowledge that Jesus on the cross has already healed me. Come on. Bring the wheelchair here. Turn it. Now tell me what is wrong with your system. What did the doctor say? Now I'm asking you what is the doctor say because it gives us advantage to attack that area which is not working. Okay, tell me. Um, last year I've been diagnosed with motor neuron disease and um, it went very bad in a way but from December to now uh, I stopped walking. My breathing is very bad and uh, my, my whole body is very weak. Okay, now from December and when did they diagnose this? Late November. Okay, late November. How much time did you spend on Google in researching that sickness? Not much. My wife did. Okay. Now, when you are doing a research on the, on the sickness, are you going to gain faith or, or facts? Facts. So, is it going to give birth to more fear or more faith? Fear. So, the same disease. I, I know another person. He did a complete research about that sickness for months together. So the process which was about to take three years, damaging, it went at high speed in three months. He got the result what was going to happen in three years. Are you, are you understanding? Yep. Because what you are thinking affects your body. So now Jesus is saying to you that when he hung on the cross, he has taken your sickness, your disease. Now do you choose to believe that? Yes. Okay. You give me a hand. Now I want you to close your eyes. From where, from which part of your body there is no sensation? A good sensation, but weakness my whole body. Like I can't lift my arm too much. Uh, the leg is weak, can't hold my body, and even my but you, strength but is gone. Is it, is it weakness or you can't move your legs? I can't move, it's too weak. Like my muscle is gone everywhere. The muscle is gone into wear and tear. Yeah, the, the sickness itself, it's a generation of muscle in your body. Okay, now can you reverse it? Yes. By faith, can you put Hebrews 11, 11 please? Now, now that word strength is 
a power to recreate a dead womb because she was 90 89 so how did she receive that that power through faith through faith now what did we what did we learn about faith let the weak say strong so how many times have you been telling yourself about that sickness called whatever it kills my immunity yeah many many a times so now were you operating on faith or fear yeah are you following yeah. you might say i have faith but your thinking your words yeah. your emotions your imagination <coughs> is not word based but what the doctor says says and specified and give you the details are you following yeah but when it came to sarah what did she do to faith by faith so when god called her sarah the mother of many nation did she call herself by that name okay. now when the doctor has put a file what is he called on that file the yes. name of the sickness now do you look at that and you say this is not my file my file is that by jesus is wounds i am healed every moment is an attack Okay let me give you an example. Do you love football? Soccer yes. Yes. Now your wife is talking to you and your favorite team is playing the match live. And she's standing next to the team. Who are you looking at? TV. <laughs> now now she is trying to talk to you something and the ball has gone to the opponent team close to the D. Now, who are you here? Is your wife watching this? No, no. She's here. She's sleeping. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so please be free to answer. But this is recorded. She will be able to see. No problem. Okay. No problem. Now, the child is calling you from behind, and the ball has already gone on flight, and it's going towards the goal post. Now are you looking at your daughter or child or yep <laughs> Come on we are all still Now are you still sitting on the sofa or you are already I'm I'm moving running <laughs> So that means you are totally and completely focused on that game Yep the day you begin to watch the same match of jesus on the cross and you begin to watch his wounded body and you're focused on that wounded body with that same intensity and your mind is full of that now you are in faith so you can say i am in faith now the healing is progressive the healing is instant but surely tonight there will be a healing praise lord you will not leave this door without seeing how faith works in you i believe okay are you ready more than ready are you ready yes yes give me a hand and and those who have got mobile you can do the recording because praise god the same prayer works for other people might be in the hospital might be somewhere or the other the words work all the time because the word of jesus is alive i want you i don't want you to pray i only want you to listen attentively repeat the words but use your will you your imagination okay and and the problem is where in your spine no 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 it's a autoimmune disease attacking my body it's a disease attacking your body okay lord jesus lord jesus lord lord jesus lord jesus 
I thank you, I praise you. I thank you and I praise you. All things are possible. All things are possible. To you. To you. And the word says. And the word says. All things are possible. All things are possible. To us who believe in you. To us who believe in you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. As I am in your presence, as I am in your presence, listening to your word, listening to your word, I prepared my heart, I prepare my heart, a good soil, a good soil, Lord, Lord, your anointing, your anointing has already started working, has already started working in my body, in my body, as I believe in you, as I believe in you, your anointing, your anointing kills, kills. Every work of Satan. Every work of Satan. As you said. As you said. To the fig tree. To the fig tree. That did not produce fruit. But didn't produce fruit. Your word said. Your word said. No one shall eat. No one shall eat. Of you any of more. Of you any more. And the next day. And the next day. The tree died. The tree died. It was withered from the root. It was withered from the root. In the same way. In the same way. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You said. You said. All those who believe in you. All those who believes in you. Will do the same. Will do the same. What you did. What you did. And much greater than that. And much greater than that. Because. Because. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. When you curse the fig tree, when you curse the fig tree, it dies from the root. It dies from the root. In the same way. In the same way. Right now. Right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. In your name. In your name. I am talking to this infirmity. I am talking to this infirmity. In my body. In my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I curse you. I curse you. I bind you. I bind you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. And I cast you out of my body. And I curse you out of my body. Go to the sea. Go to the sea. And never come back again. And never come back again. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I do not doubt. I do not doubt. In my heart. In my heart. But I believe. But I believe. What I said. What I said. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. You said. You said. I shall have. I shall have. Whatever I say. Whatever I say. This is my confession. This is my confession. Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I see your wounded body I see your wounded body and from your wounded body and from your wounded body your precious blood your precious blood is flowing is flowing into my muscles into my muscles into my blood into my blood into my tissue into my tissue into every organ of my body into every organ of my body and has destroyed the sickness and has destroyed the sickness and i receive your strength and i receive your strength i am strong i am strong i am strong i am strong all my organs are 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 functioning perfectly now all my organs are functioning perfectly now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i am set free i am set free in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i am set free i am set free in the name of jesus in the name of jesus my health is restored my health is restored completely restored completely restored completely recovered completely recovered i thank you lord jesus i thank you lord jesus i am completely healed i am completely healed in jesus name 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 amen 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 thank you jesus 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 hallelujah hallelujah come on hold it just take the mic from him just put it down Come on, hold it. Come on. Get up. Come on. Get, lift him up, brother. Lift him up, brother. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Okay. Father, I thank you, I praise you. 
every infirmity in his body, I curse it in Jesus' name. Lord, your spirit brings life. And with my eyes of faith, I see life flowing into his body. In the name of Jesus, begin to move your hands. Yes, begin to move your hands. Begin to move. Begin to do something that you could not do with your hands. Begin to do something which you could not do with your hands. As your hands are moving, the life is flowing into your spine. Come on, come on, keep moving your hands. You could not lift your hands. Come on, go ahead, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, everybody. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Beautiful. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep saying, thank you, Jesus. Concentrate only on Jesus, not on your movement. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Up and down. Come on. Come on. Now you move it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, up and down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Your Thank bones you, are getting stronger. Come on. Thank Your you, muscles Jesus. are getting stronger. Come on. Thank Come you, on. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, push. Thank Very good. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My, my friend, can you see what the face? Not really. Now, Still like. Yeah, I'm not talking about complete. Some change. Up in some sort of heat. Okay. And some change in your movements? No. No change. No change. Okay. Now that there's no change, does that mean it won't work? No. It will work. It will work. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, can you go home and practice this continually? Yes. And I'll be in touch with you. Yes. Okay? Yep. So, from now on, do you have the disease? No. So, do you believe you will be healed? I'm already healed. Now, now, can you keep on saying to yourself thousands of times, and, and listen, a mirror is very important. A mirror. Okay? Look at your face in the mirror and tell yourself that I am completely healed. Your eyes will say no. Now, you, this is what happened. There's, there's a testimony of a man named Rol. He met with an accident. His nerves are dead. So he has no movement in his fingers. He has no memory. So the mom is teaching him A for apple, B for ball. But he was a person who was preaching the word. So when his memory got restored, he began to recollect how faith works. So he would look into the mirror and he would say, left hand, go up. And the hand would not move. And he would say, wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now left hand, come down. There was no movement. But he would do that in front of the mirror. Now what was he exercising? 
faith. And he began to do that day and night. One day, his finger moved. The moment his finger moved, he said, I am that Elijah who saw the little cloud. It's going to rain. Okay? He began to do that and began to do that and began to do that. Today, he's completely healed and he plays soccer. So when he went to meet the doctor, he went to meet the doctor because the doctor said, nerves which are dead don't come back alive. So he went to meet the doctor and he went in that style. Okay? And the doctor said, you know, I understand this and that and that. When the doctor finished all his explanation, he said, Doctor, there is a power which I learned called faith. And I began to exercise. And I've come to tell you, not to put point finger to you, because you did your job, but faith did his job. And he stood up and showed the doctor what had happened. The doctor, who was a Hindu, he said, Your God has made this miracle. So, I have seen you on the video. When I will be coming somewhere in September, we will see the video before and after. Did yeah. you hear somebody say, now we are Amen? Yes, I yes, somebody said, I heard it. You know what that person said? I agree with you, brother. And the Bible says, when somebody agrees with you, the Heavenly Father will do it for you. Amen. Now you are coming Amen? Now you have amen, amen? Yeah. Now why the amens increase? Because they all have the desire. Now they understood how to exercise their faith. Mm. So next time, before I come, we will see the creative miracle in you, in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you see him, his, his hands and legs are weak. In my case, my mind was so weak that I did not know my name. My mind was so weak that I could not recognize my wife and children. So when I see you, my friend, my brain was gone. But when the Lord restored, I began to feed my brain day and night with this word and this word healed me completely <laughs> hallelujah okay uh, those who are going can you please wait for two minutes it's time now to sow a seed in the kingdom of god when you are putting your dollars, now this money doesn't go come to me, it's going to the church. Now when you are putting your dollars, it's not money. It is what God has given you, you have used your time, health, wisdom and all that and converted into dollars. When you are putting that seed, you are saying, Lord I am a farmer who is planting the seed in your soil. And Lord, as a farmer, already knows that when he plants the seed in good soil, the good soil will surely produce the harvest. Is that right? So if he plants 5 grams, he will get that much fold. If he plants 500 grams, he will get that much more. That's what he says, right? Did Jesus say these words or I am saying? Jesus said. So first, before you take that seed, make a prayer and say, Lord, I am a farmer and this is your gift to me. This is not money. This is my life. And I come to you to offer my life on this altar. And I want to name this seed, Lord. Wherever there is strife, wherever there is bitterness, wherever there is unforgiveness, whatever the devil has stolen from me, let the seed bring in the harvest of total destruction of every work of Satan and Lord let your blessings come so that I will be a blessing to others all the days of my life. 
Yes? Can you close eyes and say this? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And your word has touched my heart. And I believe your word with all my heart. You said, when I give, it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men pour into my bosom. Lord Jesus, the reason I want you to multiply is because I can become more and more a blessing in the kingdom of God. This is my seed. Let the seed go and destroy every work of Satan in my family, in my neighborhood. I believe, Lord, this is an anointed seed that is bringing forth break, breakthrough in every area of my life. I am here not to buy a miracle, but to exercise my faith and imitate Abraham when he planted the seed in the life of Melchizedek. He poured out his heart and said, God, I'm childless. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying to him, you will have your own child. That seed destroyed the barrenness of Sarah and brought Isaac into this world. In the same way, let the seed destroy every work of Satan and let your promises be inherited in my life so that I'm blessed to be a blessing to the nations. By faith, I declare I am blessed. My family is blessed and we are a blessing to the nations in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Now plant the seed. Hallelujah.